Hello, everyone. Um, all right, coming up now, we have Dr. Dan Kim, who's an Associate Professor at the University of Queensland. Um, I'm a UQ alumni myself. Um, and he's here to talk about moving target defenses, recent advances and challenges. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's very, my great honor to give a talk at All Search Conference 2021. Uh, today I'm, I'm going to talk about moving target defenses and uh, some recent advances and some challenges. And before I'm going to talk about moving target defense, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm an editor board member of Elsevier Computers and Security, uh, which is one of the top uh, journal in uh, cybersecurity area. Also, I, I started serving the IEEE communications and surveys and tutorials. It's the number one impact so in the all IEEE journals. There are about two, 120 IEEE journals. And I served as general chair and co-chair for the conferences, ACISP and PLDC and so on. And my publication, uh, according to the Google Scholar, is more than 3,850. And uh, I have published more than 130 papers in, in journals and conferences and workshops over the years. Uh, I, I've done some research in, and development uh, in regard to moving target defense, uh, sponsored by New Zealand government and also US uh, Army Research Lab. And I got uh, fundings from US Army Research Lab three times. I'm also working on that now. And this is the list of uh, projects I've done with the U.S. Army Research Lab in regard to moving target defenses. And this is a talk line line. First, I'm going to talk about the uh, background of MTD and then three-dimensional uh, aspect of MTD and uh, what type of MTDs are existing uh, and then uh, some MTD-related matrices. Uh, then I'm going to talk about some um, of my work uh, in MTD techniques for the uh, cloud computing in vehicle networks and IoT and uh, other areas. And then I'm going to introduce some other activities going on in academia and also industry. And uh, finally, I'm going to introduce some challenges and future directions. Before I'm going to talk about MTD, uh, let me summarize some terms. The system, so we can think of the asset. Asset can be any system resources, including hardware, uh, software, and data and communication facilities. And some examples of IT assets are infrastructure, applications, endpoints, and IoT, cloud, and supply chain. And uh, in, a, in, the, in a system or a network, there is a vulnerability. Vulnerability is a flaw or weakness that could be exploited by attackers and to violate system security goals like CIA. And there are attack surfaces. Attack surfaces are uh, a collection of the reachable and exploitable vulnerabilities in a system and network, in the, maybe in the IT assets. And then there are mitigation strategy uh, in terms of uh, prevention, detection, and tolerance, and sometimes resiliency. And then why we need an MTD? Uh, first reason is that, is it possible to make a perfectly secure system? Yeah, no, right? it's not possible. So there are always a way to find vulnerability in the system and networks. And how about this? Traditional defense techniques are very passive, mostly, and they're static. So once you apply it, then you use it for a long time. But attacker has advantage over defender because they have developed advanced techniques in penetrating systems and networks, right? developing new exploits, new ways to find the vulnerabilities, and then they exploit them continuously and try to compromise systems and networks. Then, how, then this calls call that uh, this generates the asymmetry between attacker and defender. So attacker has advantage over defender. Yeah, this way, attacker is bigger than a defender. So can you change this landscape? How? Right, that's my question. That's why the MTD is required. So can you change this equation like this way? Or maybe 
a great uh, uh, attack defender has a much more power than uh, attackers. So one way to do this one is to uh, apply moving target defense. So moving target defense technique uh, continuously change the attack surface uh, to thwart attacks. And uh, it, it's like a, a, a creating a cyber or slash digital shell game. Have you done any shell game before? So you, you have a ball, right? And then you mix it the cups, then ask that where is that, right? So if a uh, system can be dynamically changed regular, in a regular basis, or maybe by uh, triggering events, then uh, attacker will be uh, not easy to attack that one. So a MTD uh, is trying to make it much harder for attacker to their dirty work by consistently change the attack surface and also the defender's environments. And also it, it try to increase the uncertainty and also includes the complexity for attackers, right? That's the main goal. And there are three dimensions in MTD. First dimension is what to move. So how you can change system configurations from the static configuration to the dynamic. So what elements we can uh, use to do that? That's the first uh, dimension, what to move. So it's about moving elements. So it's, it can be a single element, there can be a multiple elements. So, and the second uh, uh, dimension is how to move. It's about techniques. So uh, how you, you can choose an, an element or more and how you can move that element, right? That's the second one, technique. A third one is when to move. So it's uh, about adaption strategy. Uh, so, First, the uh, moving elements. So I, I listed the potential layers we can think about from the hardware, or virtual machine monitor, this is called hypervisor, and virtual machine instance uh, in a cloud or a virtualized system, and operating system, and application, and so on. So this can be applied in many different areas. So I will show you what are, are the moving elements you can think about uh, in a minute? Mm -hmm. And then the second one is about how to move. Uh, I classify them into three different categories, including diversity, redundancy, and shuffle. Okay. And uh, for the uh, when to move, uh, we can divide them into three cases, time-based, event-based, and hybrid type. So now I'm going to talk about one by one. So first one is what to move, it's moving elements. So we published this one in our ACM CCS workshop, MTD workshop. There is a MTD workshop, annual workshop at in conjunction with the ACM CCS conference. And we listed all the, uh, some of the existing uh, elements that you could think about. If you take a look at this table, uh, if you see the diversity, so what kind of uh, different hardware we can use to increase the complexity of attacks? So from the hardware point of view, we can use different uh, CPU and the uh, hardware architecture and so on. And for the virtual machine monitor hypervisor level, uh, that can be our, we can choose Zen or VMware or an EXI server, right? And so on. Then maybe there are more than that. And the virtual machine, uh, we may use uh, same as OS uh, or maybe different version. And then OS level, we can use different version of OS and different version of kernels and so on. And then for the application, uh, for the same application, we can use different uh, uh, software version, right? For example, web, we can use IIS or Apache and the different version as well. And for the redundancy, we can think about how we can use different uh, type of uh, replicas so that uh, this, this can increase the availability and reliability of uh, systems we want to protect. The last one, the shuffle, uh, we can change some values 
uh, you know, timely based or event based. So some of them can be the port number can be changed or virtual IP can be changed and the uh, virtual IP and port number can be changed uh, on a regular basis. That's all the possible elements you can think. Of course, there are much more than that, uh, but we summarize that in this table. Uh, and if I uh, give an example for each uh, techniques, shuffle can be, we uh, can keep the real IP address as, as they are, but we can change virtual IP address every X period of time. So every one minute, virtual IP address can be changed. And then uh, attacker is trying to scan the network, then it's a change already, right? So what is a typical the port scanning, IP scanning time? It may take maybe a few seconds to the minutes. Then if the IP address is being changed, then even though a tech can find that IP address during that period of time, it's gone in the next phase, right? That's why this is very efficient. So virtual IP shuffling can be applied. How we can uh, realize that one? We may use uh, SCN technology uh, software defined networking technology is easy to configure that at the software switch level, or some some researchers use a middleware or a proxy server to do that work. So real IP address does not change, but only the virtual IP address allocated to the real IP address is changing every uh, time interval. Right, that's the idea of uh, shuffling. And shuffling can be happen in many different ways, uh, based on what elements uh, a security designer can choose. The second one is a redundancy. Rather than having one single server, but you can think about having two server, especially this redundancy is not very new technique, but uh, in the photon design is very commonly used. So if you increase number of replica or number of servers, it's good for uh, the availability perspective of systems. So that's the redundancy can be used. And this redundancy can be uh, same replica or it can be a diverse replica as well. So the so, uh, redundancy can be combined with the other techniques. Also, this redundancy can be combined with the shuffle as well. So each uh, server may have different virtual IP address allocated rather than having the same IP address. And the last one is the diversity. We can use different uh, version of software uh, this can be done at the OS level, application level, or compiler level, or different uh, program languages. Right? So that's different implementations. And, and this uh, summarizes uh, some benefits when uh, diversity, redundancy, shuffle is used. Shuffle is very efficient. And because uh, it's you don't have to change much thing, but only IP address, virtual uh, port number, it's very efficient to uh, implement. The redundancy can, can help to increase the reliability and availability of systems. And the diversity can uh, enhance uh, resiliency and robustness of uh, the systems and networks. That's the benefits. Also, they have a drawbacks. I'm gonna talk about that too soon. And the last uh, D is about when to move. So this can be done and when system starts, time-based one, every time interval, for example, 300 second, it can change the IP address and move can happen, right? The every th another 300 seconds elapsed, then a move can be uh, happening and uh, another move. Or this can be done based on events or, uh, maybe all multiple events. For example, an intrusion detection alert is generated, then it may uh, trigger a move, right? Rather than waiting until the next interval. That's the idea of that. So this event can be any, many different things, right? So this event can be user driven. So oh, I wanna do it uh, randomly because to, to protect the system against much more intelligent attackers. And this can be combined together. So this is called hybrid triggering. So event-based and time-based MTD can be used same time. And that there is some delay for this one, right? Of course, in intrusion detection is alert is uh, uh, generated, 
then you need to check that whether this event is actually a uh, correct one or not. And it takes some time to check that. And so that's why there's some delay as well. And now let me introduce some MTD related matrices. So we can think about security matrices and the performability matrix and economy matrices. So when we think about uh, to adopt MTD techniques to uh, our, uh, there's some system we want to protect. First one, security. There are many, so many different types of security matrices. Some of the examples are system risk. System risk can be computed by multiplying the probability and the impact value, and, and also uh, attack cost, and attack path, and the vulnerability level, and the probability of the success, and many other matrices can be used to show that different aspect of MTD. So let's say that we have a static system, and also we have a static system which is adopting some part of some uh, of the MTD techniques. So can you compare that? How efficient or effective uh, the system adopting MTD technique? Right. So it, it may show that there's some improvement in the system risk, but it may uh, it lower some right at the cost. But it may introduce another problems. One of the problem can be performance. So for example, uh, users are using a system then they want to connect to the system which adopting MTD, then there's end-to-end -end connections. Suddenly, MTD is triggered. What happened? The connection will be lost, right? So especially that the, the TCP connection is a long tail, then it may cause uh, maybe some performance drop degradation, right? And this can be a, a critical problem. So we also measure not only the security aspect of the MTD, but also performance. So that it may cause some blocking of yeah, connections, also dropping of existing connections, and also it may downgrade the QoS level, right? Throughput can be dropped and so on, right? So we, we try to uh, develop MTD techniques which can satisfy the secure level, also performance. Also, uh, also this is, has some trade-off. If you wanna increase the security, then we may need to uh, us, uh, sacrifice this performance, right? So let's say the attacker can uh, find the virtual IP address within uh, an order of seconds, then we have to trigger MTD very frequently, right? Attacker can find uh, the virtual IP address being used within uh, order of minutes, then we can less frequently trigger MTD in, in terms of the uh, time-based MTD techniques. So that we, we're gonna lose less uh, connections of the less estimated users, right? That's the idea of that. Also, we need to think about the cost, economic way. So when MTD is adopted in the system, uh, does the ROI is improved a lot, a, a lot, right? Return on investment or return on secure investment is increased or not? That's that should be considered. Also, when we have a static system, then uh, adopted MTD techniques then that anti technique uh, may need some uh, capital expenditure investment, also operational cost. So, you, so with this, all the comprehensive consideration of security, econo uh, performability, and recurring matrices, we can think about this MTD technique is effective and efficient, or maybe you can say it's ineffective or inefficient. That's the idea of MTD technique and matrices. Uh, this uh, plot. Uh, a summarize of what I've done over the last uh, nine years or so. So this paper published uh, 2013, first one, and then over the year I published a lot of papers in the MTD area. So it started with uh, how we can evaluate the effectiveness of MTD techniques, and then develop the neural MTD technique um, and scalable MTD techniques, and uh, develop the MTD technique for uh, uh, IoT and SDN and also cloud computing, the domain, and also develop some dynamic matrices for MTD techniques. And this is a summary of that. Uh, and then uh, I have a, uh, 
supervised four graduates, and they worked on these different topics. And uh, first one, uh, mostly focused on effectiveness evaluation of MTD techniques. So let's say uh, if you, uh, if a, a network is uh, adopting MTD technique, does it improve the security or not, right? How effective or ineffective that MTD technique? So we need to evaluate that before we adopt that one or maybe deploy that MTD technique. So this, uh, this PhD student at the time was focusing on uh, how to use a graphical model to evaluate effectiveness of MTD techniques. Second PhD, uh, she was working on the MTD and the cyber deception technology for IoT domain. And third one, develop uh, I, virtual IP shuffling and uh, virtual port shuffling for uh, SCN networks. And uh, we also have a test bed for that. And the last one, uh, he was interested in combination of MTD techniques for cloud computing. So I'll show some demo for that. So I, let me show you some uh, technique applied to the cloud, uh, some, some, some real domain. First one is MTD for the cloud. And the second MTD in the uh, SDN. A third is MTD for the in vehicle networks. And the last one is the uh, MTD for the IoT networks. Uh, this is a real implementation. So we use a Unitech cloud. And uh, we also made a, a graphical user interface to trigger MTD in the cloud environments. And uh, let me show you some demo. Uh, hopefully, it should work. <laughs> I just use a USB stick. So uh, let me click that one. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it works. So this shows a shuffle. So for the MTD, we use a virtual machine migration as a uh, shuffling technique. So you can see that uh, some of the nodes, the virtual machine, uh, is moving from one uh, logical host to the other. So we can change the configuration of uh, cloud computing so that uh, uh, it's not dynamic anymore. So a uh, uh, virtual machine in the cloud virtualized environment can move from one to the, the other way. So uh, on a regular basis or event-based. That's the first demo. The second one is um, diversity. So we use different uh, virtual machine version. So a little bit slow. Yeah. So you can see that the, the OS version, of course, this can be implemented at different way. So application level or other level, but the, we, we choose that one. Uh, so you can see that different version of OSs and that that can be deployed uh, based on uh, our policy and the rules and then your implementation. So we use the API provided by the this, this private cloud. And you can see that uh, we, we can apply different types of uh, OS version in the cloud. And the last one is a redundancy. And this, this one, you can see that the sum of virtual machine uh, have multiple replicas. So in, in, you can look at, look at them in the middle. So some node, uh, so you can see that the new uh, circle will be generated. Can you see that? Yeah, it's quickly happened. So that uh, uh, we can generate redundancy uh, in real time of in the cloud environments so that uh, uh, it can increase the availability of uh, you know, cloud system. And the next one is that how we can implement MTD in the SDN. So we have uh, tested this one in the stochastic modeling uh, using uh, Petri net modeling and also use a simulation. Also we have our, our own test bed. So using a uh, software switch. Uh, and uh, the idea is this, uh, when attacker is trying to uh, penetrate the system and then make a later movement to reach a target and exfiltrate the data, uh, uh, we assume that attacker can follow the cyber kill chain. So lucky to my team one. So from data collection, right? So the first step is to collect data about that. So very typically uh, attacker use uh, port scanning or IP uh, scanning. Then if 
the um, virtual IP address and uh, real IP address mapping is changing every unit time. How effect, uh, effective this one against port scanning, IP scanning. So we we uh, tested that in the, our ascent test bed and also measure that uh, how long it takes to find a virtual address, address being allocated to an end host, right, for a given period of time. And uh, this shows very effective way. So this is one of the example of that. It's called a flexible random virtual IP multiplexing, uh, in short, FRVM. Uh, as you can see that uh, one real IP address uh, is mapped with the multiple virtual IP address and port number. Here, port number is a real port number. The virtual IP address is a different uh, virtual IP address. So we can use 24 or 16, depending on how well uh, this uh, system want to use, right? So 16 then, uh, if you use a 16, CIDAR, then is a two to the 16, right? Bit can be used for the virtual IP address. This is really hard to find within a uh, minute or three minutes that's attacker. So sometimes it's lucky enough, then attacker can find it. Then next one is attacker can find some vulnerability uh, in the end host, then scan that, then they take another time. Then uh, attacker is successful to find the vulnerability, then attacker can exploit that vulnerability, then Entity is triggered, right? Then attacker's attempt is gone, something like that. So attacker can achieve all the steps from the data collection to the backdoor installation. If it takes maybe order of between the, the uh, empty interval, maybe 300 second, then attacker will uh, maybe have that access to the internal system, right? So we want to uh, reduce the time interval if there are frequent attack attempt. If there's less attempt, then we can uh, increase the time interval, right? That's the main idea of that. And this is implemented and tested as well. And the lot, next one is that in vehicle networks. One of the, the project uh, I'm current, uh, currently working on uh, with the ARL is that how to apply moving target defense techniques to the in vehicle network. This can be used to the autonomous vehicle as well, right? So in vehicle network, they have many ECUs, so electric computer unit, and then they, the ECUs are communicating uh, via canvas, it's a car area network. And that uh, if a attacker outside of the uh, vehicle can connect to the, uh, the car, then they can compromise some of the ECUs, then they can shut down the function of the ECU. Then how we can uh, make this difficult the one of the ideas used MTD technique for in vehicle networks. So we started with them, and there was we also have an NIDS module, so it can detect ongoing attack. Uh, we are using AI technique to detect it, and also use a misuse detection engine as well. So by detecting some ongoing attacks, we can adjust the trigger uh, interval, right? So that if you see a lot of alerts generated from the uh, uh, in vehicle network then we trigger more MTD. And also how we can develop the MTD techniques. In this, in this uh, work, we change the address shuffling of a packet header so that the uh, attacker can get some of the, uh, the canvas messages, but it's invalid after, uh, uh, after some minutes. That's the idea of in vehicle network MTD techniques. Uh, this is one of the state of the art uh, work uh, we are, we've been working on. And the uh, last one I want to introduce is that uh, how we can apply that MTD for the IoT. So here, we combine that MTD technique with a cyber deception. So this shows a very simple IoT network. And uh, you can see that there are multiple subnets uh, represented as a dotted rectangular. And then we can put some uh, de uh, deception nodes. This uh, decoy node or deception node can be low interaction decoy nodes or maybe high interaction decoy nodes. Low interaction decoy node is a chip and attacker can find out this is a low one, right? It's easily figured out. But high interaction is uh, expensive, but uh, it mimics uh, real behavior of IoT nodes and those servers. So when attacker is trying to get to the, the deception nodes, then uh, it's forward to the uh, decoy server. Then attacker cannot get anything. And 
Also, we can shuffle the network topology so that the reachability from the entry point to the target server can be changed uh, based on the time-based MTD or uh, event-based MTD. So this can be used for the IoT networks. So we've been doing this one also with the ARL, but not, not the same team with different team. So we published some papers in this domain as well. And I have listed some uh, activities uh, being carried out in academia. So uh, Arizona State University, they are interested in the MTD and SDN, and they try to apply the game theoretical approaches to the MTD, how attacker behave and how defender behave. This can be formulated as a game. So that, that is what was done. And the Carnegie Mellon University and uh, uh, SCI, the Software Engineering Institute in, in the Carnegie Mellon University, they want to develop middleware for MTD techniques. So they do not want to change any legacy system. Uh, also, but they want to provide MTD technique. How, what's the way they can build a middleware which can understand the static uh, systems configuration and the messages and then the attackers, right, on the lessman user. So they want to develop middleware which can provide MTD technique. And the George Mason University, they were interested in MTD quantification, also performance model for MTD. And Penn State University, they are interested in how to use uh, reinforcement learning uh, to uh, uh, decide which MTD actions are the best. And uh, University of South Florida, they are interested in MTD theory and MTD for the SCN. Uh, University of Queensland, I'm, I'm, I'm super buzzing. We are interested in how we can model attack, uh, attack model-based MTD. Also, we want to develop MTD dynamic metrics. And also, I already introduced uh, some of my research outputs. And in the companies, uh, I cannot introduce every company, but I, I want to highlight some of them. So many people ask about this. MTD is actually practical? Yeah, the answer is yes. So you may know that the uh, uh, ASRL is already implemented in the Linux kernel, right? It's, it's a long time back, so from 2020s. So you can regard this as a MTD technique. It's a type of a shuffling technique. And also in the OpenBSD and the Windows Vista, and what now Windows 10 has uh, uh, this one, ASLR. And also kernel uh, ASLR is applied. And IBM Research, Hi far, they they want to develop uh, MTD technique uh, against ROP. So ROP is a return oriented programming, right? So this is a more advanced uh, memory uh, based attacks uh, in the systems. So they want to use MTD technique and by shuffling the uh, the sequence of uh, program executions. Yeah. So this is uh, the ongoing work. And Morpisac is one of the company. They want to develop. Uh, the cybersecurity solution based on MTD for end host protection. So they want to um, protect the virtual desktop infrastructure. And this is funded by the US DOD and DHS, it's several millions of project. And uh, next IE, they are, they are focusing on the MTD for the data storage uh, area. And the uh, crypto next stack, next one, they, are, they want to develop hardware device. It's like a proxy between uh, users and uh, static systems, right? They want to protect the system, but rather than changing the system, they want to develop a device like a secure box. So they can put them in the middle. So this can provide some shuffling techniques in between so that they can protect the legacy and static systems. That's just the only way it works. Of course, I haven't listed all the companies. I cannot find all of them, but uh, this is uh, some of the example that how, how the companies and uh, the products are being developed. Okay, last one is uh, the challenge of the, the MTD techniques. So I have listed four of them. The first one is the security and performance and cost trade-off. So you can see that uh, if you trigger MTD a lot, then it introduces downtime or maybe performance degradation. And also that downtime caused the uh, penalty of the services, right? So how we can adjust this one, the trade-off. Second one is that, can you develop hybrid MTD for that, that can be optimized, right? So how often MTD is triggered and how often we can trigger event-based MTD for a certain system. So can you optimize that? 
That's the second challenge. The third challenge is about, uh, so I, I introduced some practical services, but there are still some more improvements, right? That needed to be needed and testing as well. So I developed my own uh, proposed techniques and and of doing research, but uh, we need a more tests and then deployment and and so on. That's that's uh, challenges. And the last one is that can we advance the MTD technique itself against AI based attacks? So we assume that the dummy attackers, maybe a little a little intelligent attacker, not very smart, smartest attacker. Smartest attacker will use very sophisticated techniques to from the data collection to the, the achieving the goal. So can we develop empty techniques, which is adaptive and also very intelligent about AI-based attacks? That's the challenge as well. And then the last one is a future direction is uh, uh, how do you can do these things, right? That I list the same thing for that uh, uh, future direction. Okay, that's it uh, for uh, today's talk. Yeah, thank you. All right, um, we've got one question in there so far, but if you have any questions, feel free to chuck it in the app really quick. Yeah. Um, so our first one is: many organizations struggle to do basic BCP and DR. Are there bite-sized MTD recommendations that could be used to implement for high-risk systems as a first step. So where can we get started with MTD? Yeah, so easy adoption could be the virtual IP shuffling as long as we have some infrastructure supports, soft switch, that could be easy one. So end hosts have a, uh, this uh, virtual IP shuffling and virtual port shuffling is easy to implement, and as long as uh, uh, you can buy some uh, additional devices, yeah, that's possible. Cool. Um, from Andrew, great work, and it has many uses. And I wanted to chuck one question out there myself. Um, in your example for diversity, you yeah. had uh, an example with uh, Apache servers and IIS servers. Yeah. Um, does that end up, you know, expanding your threat landscape in terms of zero-day vulnerabilities? Yeah, so that's, uh, even though we introduce diversity, it does not guarantee that the security will be improved. Yes, it may introduce more uh, attack vectors, also attack surface. We can widen that. So for the zero-day, uh, somewhat that uh, we do not trust anything, then we do not know that what's the new attack will be coming up by exploring the vulnerabilities. That the one way is to change things, right? It may help, may not, depending on how quickly attacker can proceed with a zero day vulnerability. Let's say that new zero day vulnerability and then uh, ex and related exploit can quickly uh, achieve all the goal from the entry to the end within empty interval. The MTD will not be effective. But if not, then entity is still valid. Yep. I would probably ask about the old school, old school like specific question. Yep. So is there value in uh, in disrupting the reconnaissance more than there is on actually changing the, the sort of the, the architecture of the landscape? So how the things that what what uh, what infrastructure you might be using. So if you disrupt the if you disrupt the reconnaissance in the first place you put the attacker back so far that it might never ever catch up. And then you can slow down the other changes, which are there before you can keep your availability going and yep. have this service disruption. But you, you, you're, you're holding back the attacker by just giving them lots of false information. Yes, that, that's possible. So um, if per, currently, that the, we, if you think about the reconnaissance as a first step, and then that's the first attempt, right, to block it. but. Uh, attacker has already done the, the data collection about the potential server, then we need to think about the next level MTD. So in not just a single layer MTD, uh, we need to think about defense in depths. So multiple layer of MTD. So I also think about that too. So how we can develop this um, stronger MTD with a what if scenario. What if the first step is done and uh, attacker is already in, inside of the network, right? Yeah, that's a very good question, yeah. 
yeah, that's that should be more developed. All right, it looks like that's all the questions we have for. We're just running out of time now too. So um, just another round of applause and thank you. Thank you so much. I know.